Listen to the rest of it on the weekend, but it's a it's a it's a really sad song because back in the day, black kids were forced to speak English. They they had to lose their own language. They they weren't allowed to speak Zulu or Kosa or anything like that. And there's one one paragraph that's super like wow uh, when he says. Uh, Bits of, bits of songs and broken drums are all he could recall, but the future calls his name out loud, echoed on the violence of the guns. So, yeah, I've, I've read it. I've read it. You typed it. Oh, yeah. I'm so it's, it's, it's like a poetry. It's basically like, basically it's memory, the, my, 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 my dance film, but in a song. It's beautiful. I mean, I'm just speechless right now because... It's an it's an emotional to start an interview with the, and a talk a conversation with the song and and you said it's yeah it's your film in a song yeah so, yeah and it, yeah basically basically you, the the spoken word in the film is very much the sentiment of being forced to speak a different language and with language comes all your your culture and your thing you. you your whole existence is your language. And once you have to speak a different language, that's the first thing you, you cut, you know, like, and then it doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. I, I, and I think actually every poetry, it's every poetry film. I think initially the idea that it starts with a word, even if it's not written, but the word is born in your mind. And sometimes it's just an image behind words. And, uh, you know, yeah. I, I, always, yeah, I always remember this wonderful line. Uh, I love to read Virginia Woolf. And uh, there is a line there in one of her in her latest novel between two acts where she said, she says, thoughts without words, can it be? You know, so she asks these questions about thoughts without words. And I think that what your film does so beautifully that sometimes maybe there are no precise words for it, but you can see the thought and emotion expressed through body language and actually through nature a lot, mm -hmm. water and, and earth. I mean, uh, and I've, I, I listen, first of all, I, I was very moved to discover the Kenyan professor, Nyoni Vationgo, right? I, I hope I, 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 can, I can never pronounce his name. Like, I, I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce it. I, I must say, I saw it. <laughs> I must say, I watched the YouTube clip, you know, to just at least to, to, to hear the pronunciation, Nyoni Vationgo, but. Uh, I was very. I, I listened to the whole interview, and I was very grateful that you shared the backstory with me before, because actually that's fascinating. How you discovered the soundscape with a spoken word, and then everything comes together. Because what you say about language and being deprived of your own language, as you know, I'm Ukrainian, and there is a colonized history of Russian and Ukrainian language, and also imposing Russian language and prohibiting literature and art, and thus depriving yourself of emotional memory. So yes, I, yes. I, I would love to, I, I read your story, but I would love to hear it from you again, I guess. How was it in the middle of the night you were sitting in front of an editing and you couldn't find what would do justice to the raw beauty of the dance, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I basically, I mean, we kind of jump a little bit ahead, but it's, yeah. I, I had another, uh, an editor I work with and I said, listen, I, I shot this dance film, um, I don't really know where it's going. I just, all I know is that when I was filming it, when I was playing the music, when we were standing in the forest and I was watching Will dance, I had goosebumps. So I don't feel like I can do justice with doing this edit. So I kind of gave it, uh, I, 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 so one night I, I literally got out of, I, it was two o'clock in the morning and I couldn't go to sleep. So I went downstairs and I was like, okay, I can either watch like, 
I can either watch some random discovery program about like renovating cars or some nature program, or I can just go and listen to some music. So I started listening to music and I started going back to my playlist, sort of so African, South African jazz, because I, I really enjoy that. And via via, I came onto a, um, a, a jazz musician called Vuma Lemon and listening to his stuff. I was like, oh man, this stuff is amazing. And then one song was that spoken word, but to music. So I thought, wow, those lyrics, those lyrics are amazing. That voice, amazing. So I got in touch with a jazz musician and he said, oh, actually, it's from a Kenyan theologian. So and so, here's the link. And I was like, no, really, it's, you didn't even write the words. He's like, no, I just basically used it as creative expression. So I said, okay. And basically what you do then, you, you press, I press play on the timeline, like with just with the music. And I pressed play on the YouTube clip and I kind of like sunk them up wildly and I went play. And I watched it and I went, oh. like you straight away I knew that was it. That voice, uh the, the the content of what he was saying, the whole idea about memory and it is who you are. And I'm like, that's is what internally is going on with my dancer. That is the struggle he's having. He's being attacked by an outside force. Call it colonization, call it internal demons, call it something. But that's what he's experienced. And he's, ha he's having to break free from that. He's trying, but it's, it's pulling him back the whole time. And the only time he finds redemption and, and, and a freedom to, to be who he is and, and who he wants to be is once he's submerged in the water. So I was like, it's amazing. So... Then I did this thing, with it, which every creative does. You know, they go, I'll just use it as a guide for now, and then I'll worry about getting permission later, or maybe I'll rewrite it and then get someone else to speak the words. But but you know what happens then, right? You just completely fall in love with that yeah. voice. And then I started getting – then I got to the point where my film was finished, and then I was like, okay, but now we need to get hold of someone to give me permission. Can I use this video clip? So I, th I emailed what on his website was his uh, literary agent, and I didn't get a response. I sent another email. I sent it to another email address, and it didn't. Nothing came back. And then eventually I, I thought, you know what? Let me reach out to the Copenhagen people who put up this interview. Mm -hmm. Do you have a person of contact? They were like, chat to this person. So I emailed this person. This person said, I forwarded your email to his agent and to him. They'll get it, they'll be in touch with you. And I was like, oh, and within one day I had all the permission to use it as is for my film. And I was like, because because it was just it was perfect i mean the the the, the fact that he's something like he's like 87 years old you can hear you can hear the experience you can hear the the hurt and the turmoil he's gone through and the, and the things he's seen you can hear it in his voice so it's not it's not just someone saying that that memory is who we are he has so many memories and then you have this very young dancer who is having to deal with the same issues that his generation went through. So I, I just really, th there's no way that you would have to re-record it because it was, the, 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 the fact that it was so sincere in his interview, like you can't recreate that. No matter if you get a voiceover, even if you've got Morgan Freeman to do it and say, <laughs> Morgan Freeman, can you please read this? It would never have sounded the same. So that's kind of how it came to being a sort of spoken word poetry film. Um, because in the beginning, it was just a dance film. It was just a, yeah. it was a project for me to do something abstract. And I had obviously played with the idea of, of a theme of water and redemption um, in my feature film uh, that I'm writing. Um, so basically, slight backstory. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents, we moved to Cape Town for my parents to start a home for three children back in 1991. And 
um, in the first few years, my, my dad just built up relationships, got the know-how. And then at, at some point, we started taking all, street children off the street. And the first five or six boys stayed with us as a family. Uh -huh. So we were a family of five and we suddenly became a family of 10 with five boys, you know, like that kind of thing. And one of those boys was Alfonso and it was Mornay and Edward was there and John was there. So I kind of, I knew these boys. So a few years ago, I'm uh, reading the newspaper and I see street kid turns professional surfer and I read the article and it says, and you know, thanks to Beautiful Gate because they gave me a home. And I'm like, oh my word, I know this kid. That's you too. Yeah, it was the same boy that lived with us in the family. Amazing. So I reached out to him and I said, Alfonso, do you remember me? My name is Bauke. You stayed with us. He said, oh, dude, how are you doing? Da, da, da. Anyway, I said, let's meet for coffee. So we met for coffee. And a week later, I was doing an interview with him. And in that interview, he says, um, living on the street, you feel like you're invisible because no one really takes note of you. You People just walk past you. And, he, and then eventually he says, and, and when I found surfing, when you go under the wave, it's just silent. Everything goes away. And I thought, what a beautiful imagery that some, you know, like when, when they push the surfboard under the water. I mean, I suddenly you hear everything and suddenly you go underwater and you hear nothing. You just hear boom. And in that moment, it's quite a spiritual moment, right? It's like you come out oh. the other side of the wave. I mean, yeah. The wave is behind you. Whatever happened on that side of the wave is now behind you. And now it's the future. So I thought, that's a beautiful visual of someone going underwater, coming up renewed, redeemed, um, new life, new, new purpose. So that was a the theme for the feature film. So when I had an opportunity uh, to do something creative, um I was like, well, what am I going to do? I was like, oh, well, let's explore this idea of redemption. How can mm -hmm. we, you know, how can I turn this into a personal project? So the, the visual of a dancer walking into the water and with his hands up, I thought that would be really beautiful. And then I spoke to Bob, the DOP. He's like, I said, listen, I got this idea. He's like, well, you should just write a little story around it about like, what's mm -hmm. the story? So I then wrote the shortest script of my life. It was basically like dancer is attacked by outside forces. Um, he runs away, but then is attacked again. And then eventually he finds refuge when he submerges in the water. That was like, that was the script. And um, I basically pitched it to Will and I said, Look, Will, like, this is the idea. How can we bring this idea to life into a dance? And he kind of workshopped it a little bit on his own. And Bob and I went to go look at one of his rehearsals. And we were like, okay, cool. Love it. Like, let's do this. And then we basically filmed it. And that's the reason also why I wanted to do it. Because, in I mean, I work in the world of advertising. So a script is like, you know, there's like 99 versions of a script. Yeah. Yes. There's like a PPM, everything gets a storyboard it yeah everything, everything. Yeah. you know exactly what you're going to make so there's no surprise at the end right you basically you have to deliver what you've promised and if you deliver a little bit extra that's a bonus but you can't then decide to change the whole thing so for this dance film i really wanted to just go in there and go well whatever happens happens if this becomes a really nice something that's a bonus but I want to explore the idea of being not in control and having made all the decisions already. Mm -hmm. so even when we were filming, we knew that we were going to have the three to three or four different locations. We knew that. And we I knew that he was going to wake up and look at his hands. And in my mind, he had blood on his hands. Like that was, uh -huh. yeah, that's why he looks at his hands because he has blood. But then I thought, I can't really have a makeup artist there to do the blood all the time because the continuity is going to be terrible. It's going to be, you know, blood on his face, no blood on his face. So I thought, you know what? People can just imagine if he has blood on his face, on his hands. We knew he was going to wake up and I knew that he was going to go in the water. And then everything in between, we just made up in the moment. And I just talked to Will as he was dancing to the music. And I said, cool, now you find your, 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 your moment. 
and everything is okay. And wait, wait, there's something coming. Okay. And bang, bang. Like that's how I did it with him, you know? Um, yeah. And, and, and he really enjoyed it. Like he, he enjoyed that sort of me talking him through it, even though the music was playing, like I was telling him, it's okay. Okay. You're coming. Find your happy place. Okay. Just walk away, walk away. Like I would literally talk him through, mm -hmm. but then you end up with like three minute takes that now you have to try and edit together and try to like create a two minute, 39 second coherent story that actually tells a much bigger story, but in a really small amount of time. Um, that's kind of how it came about. So it was never me wanting to go and make a poetry film. It was me wanting to explore something that I wasn't in control of. And I've never directed a dancer, never written a dance film. So it was me wanting to be uncomfortable and not in control. And then just me handing myself over to exploring the different options, just like in the edit, like exploring different ways of editing it, exploring it, putting a piece of like hip hop underneath it that's completely, off, you know, like that, or putting a piece of classical music under it, or piece of, putting a po another poem that I found, putting it under. But then, yeah, you you try stuff. And yeah, I, I and really then, enjoyed that. Yeah, and that was really, uh, it look, it, look, it's just fascinating. I, I have goosebumps while I was listening to you because I, the way you speak, it's so, uh, uh, it's so visual. Uh, as you were talking, I was envisioning and trying to relocate myself on set for, for the yeah, memory. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have a bunch of questions, but, uh, and an inspirations to share. Um, I don't know, maybe I, I'm fascinated by the story how the boy finds salvation and uh, salvation under the wave and then he reemerges and it's like a resurrection moment. But you still decided to close the film with submerging. But it's it's amazing. Uh, Bauke, right? Oh, Bauke. Pardon. Bauke. Bauke, pardon, pardon. Bauke, it's amazing because the way, the, the end, the closing shot is um, will submerge into the water. But there is this strong feeling of continuity that it's the story is going to end and you know that he will re-emerge but when and how you don't know but there is this feeling in the film that when he re-emerges it will be definitely a new stage for him uh, really yes. but yes. yeah so you, you didn't want to make him re-emerge so even though the in the story with the with a boy who succeeded in surfing he was inspired by the fact of submerging and emerging so and it, it was something in your mind or then it, it happened at the very closing editing no I, I i i always knew i wanted to end on the shot of him going in the water and just going underwater like and i even said to will i said when you go underwater i want you to hold your breath as long as you possibly can because let's be honest you have an afro like i can't dry you you're gonna look wet for the next hour and then by then the sun is gone so you i have one take so stay underwater for as long as you can because i would love to have had 20 seconds of just nothing just the sound of birds and and and, and an empty shot but he came up after seven seconds after seven after, after seven seconds which is not long it's like one two three four five six Seven and I'm like, ah, I'm like that's not enough to put like memory a film by so and so and the credits like it's not enough time. But in my edit process, that that moment where he walks in the water and you see the feet, like to be honest, I hated the shot of the the close up of the of him walking in. It's actually, that, that, that I pardon to interrupt you. That's the intro, the opening shot, and I think this uh, this balance between two different uh forces i mean the water is a force and the soil it has its energy it's like yeah. and I, I would love maybe to hear also uh, if, you, if you can tell more was it will's in instinct to go from water to the soil or it was uh planned uh i mean because it's amazing the, the, how the, the journey work. the journey was planned so he i always knew that we were going to start the film um sort of in that savanna area where you just see that one tree. Mm -hmm. And Will wakes up 
and he 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 is lying on the floor, and the opening shot was supposed to be, which we filmed, like the camera tracking along the soil, and then we see a hand, and suddenly we see a hand being pulled towards a face, and suddenly we see a a, a face looking at the hand and seeing that there's blood, but the blood was never there. And and then he goes, what's going on? What's going on? That's how I had stopped, written the film. But in the edit, I just was like, yeah, pff, it, it doesn't feel like, it doesn't draw you in. So in the edit process, like it, it eventually I was like, oh, what about if we um, put one water shot there? And then I was like, okay, put another one there, but like two shots, that doesn't really make me a sequence. So it needs to be three shots, but what else do I have? And then I kind of went through the footage again and I found the walking into the water shot. And I thought, okay, well, let's try that. And I kind of went, okay, in, it's 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 nice, it, it, it works. But it only became really special once uh, Nick did his sound design because he started the water sound on black. And that's when you kind of, I, I think 20% of anything, 20% of the work is the visual and 80% is the sound. So once Nick put the sound to it, I was like, okay, now I like it. Because now it really draws you in. It's like, what's happening? Where is he walking to? Why is he walking into the water? Yeah. It doesn't look like he's walking, in, you know, it's not like he's wearing flip-flops and he's going to go for a, you know, a walk down the beach. So yeah, really it's very going. good. It's very raw. He's barefoot yeah. and it's raw. There is this tension and, and conflict already. Already there is... Yeah. yeah, and then you have that moment where he's holding up his hands. Already in itself is, is spiritual, you know. There, there, there's a is he looking at his hands or is he surrendering to something? Is he about to? I don't know. I, I never thought of it like this, but is he about to just take his life and just keep walking into the water, or what's he gonna do? That that was interesting. And then when he looks at his hands, and then he slowly lowers them, but you cut just before you see them go in the water. Because that, at the end of the day, is the you know the turning point when he when he puts his hands in the water and he looks up and he's like, for the first time in the film, he smiles. That that I found really powerful because for the first time you just you can see the relief the the um, you're like fine I can now I can dance like how I want and nothing's gonna stop me you know yeah. I, I I do. I actually that's one of my favorite scene in the in the film. Yeah. I find it so far. And actually, I wanted to ask about it. And you already um, shared what was the, the the feelings behind it. But one of the most powerful moments for me is like before his hands go into the water and he feels relief. And from that moment, everything changes. His choreography. He's more expressive. He does this. He shuts his mouth. He does this. And, and the ears. It's yes. like. Uh, yeah, it's like, and the, and the seconds later, after contact with the water, he has like all senses wide open. And I wanted to ask whether it was it an improvisational moment or shot in his mouth silently, silenting him and he, intentionally becoming blind and mute and deaf to, to nature. Was it something from Will or from you or from you so together? The, so the, the ear thing was my thing because in my mind, I wanted to play I had to, the external force that keeps attacking Will had to be visual in some way. So one part of me was going, we're going to make all that footage red, therefore showing the evil, the, the other outside force. But also sound design, I want to kind of, you know, kind of put like a sound in there so it feels like it's in his head. So mm. that's why he went like this, because he shut everything out. And then he added this. And I was like, yeah, that... Do what you want. Like I, it, it looks, if that's what what Will wanted to do, I'm like, then you interpret how you would like. Mm -hmm. But he just has that look on his face. Like when he does this, he he he's still kind of in agony. He's still in turmoil. There's still fighting on going inside. And I think this and this said that it was an internal thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the, the the hands going into the water, I think, is a really beautiful moment because yeah, absolutely, and it, and you can feel how he changes from that moment, how yeah. his re internal rhythm changes with how much 
freedom he dances because before that moment as if someone is restricting him and he is fighting against the confines are like um, like he has confines of his body and from yeah. that moment it's like he becomes um he becomes the whole with the universe with the nature yeah. and they dance in unison and there are no more restriction no more boundaries no more no. confines and then you have that beautiful sort of sunshine that like flaring you know in that first shot you have that sun like pulsing through and, and it's kind of a bit of a low angle and he's just dancing really yeah he could just suddenly he's free you know um yeah, yeah. I, I think i think the light in the, uh, the, the light is just amazing in the sun and i called in my mind i called you and uh your dop um it's oh. pardon, your, your DOP, pardon the name, uh, Bob, Bob, yeah. Bob Ultimate, yeah. You yeah. were sun and light catchers. That's the yeah. way I call you in my mind because I think the sun and the light even becomes one of the protagonists in the film. I don't know, because it travels on the body, it travels on the water, and I don't know who is chasing who. Either Will yeah. chase, chases the sun or the light chases him and then it was like wow was it only 239 because there are so many layers and senses and internal and external I think, I think it's really important I think length I mean I think I think one of my first edits was like five minutes hmm. and yeah it was a good edit and but I think what the issue with it is that not every beat progresses the story forward yeah you go from one beat to the next and I'm like okay what's nothing's developed and then the next, they go, okay, now something's happened. And I think you have to really plan that out really carefully. And I think a lot of the time when people get a bit abstract, they think that the longer a film is, that people will get it. But no, I just get bored after a while because it's so abstract that I'm just like, six minutes of this dancing, I just think, what? Okay, it looked beautiful in, in minute one, and it's still beautiful in minute three, but I still don't get it. And I think it's almost maybe the commercial background. Sh shorter is better. <laughs> if you can't tell it, if you can't tell it in two minutes, if you can't tell it in a minute, it it it, it can't be told in five minutes. Like I think, yeah. I think that's the, that's really the art of filmmaking and 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 editing and like crafting it and 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 really asking yourself those questions of this shot. It's really nice when the sun flares and he has a beautiful look on his face, but does it actually do something for the story? I go, no, it doesn't do anything that the shot before it hasn't done. So you must make a choice. Do you use shot this shot or that shot? Make a choice. Don't use both. Mm -hmm. Because I think as a filmmaker, you have to make decisions. And it's not about what you put into your film. It's actually about what you leave out. And I think it's also when you write stuff. I think people can write and then they write a lot. But can you say it in one paragraph? Edit your work so much to the point where it gets just to the essence of it and go, this is the story I want to tell. And I'm and I'm and I'm confident that I can tell it in one paragraph or one page or two minutes. But if you're a bit unsure, people tend to make it then longer because let's make it longer because then they kind of more time for people to figure out maybe what it is. So that's always been my kind of philosophy. If you can't tell it shorter, then definitely don't make it longer. Yeah. And it works so well with the dance because I think uh, dance is never static. And even if it is static, even if there is just a, maybe a moment when you stand still, it's never like this. There is like an emotional hurricane happening within you, waiting for the moment to be expressed. So, uh, and, I, and I think it's Will, it was just a wonderful collaboration. And, uh, uh, and um, yeah, so, uh, so there was so, so much of, of you and of him and also the nature brought I guess so much and I read in your interview that you were so proud and moved by the fact that many people thought that the film was shot in South Africa but actually it's how to pronounce it correct uh, Sandport. Sandport. Yeah, I mean uh, people were like where did you shoot this I got did you shoot it in Cape Town did you shoot it in South Africa I go no we shot it like up the road here like where the beach is like they were like no really I'm like yeah, because I think there's a shot in there where you see that tree, right? And and you see that yeah. broken grass and you see that tree. It looks, if you put an elephant in the background, I would say you're in Kenya somewhere. Like, yes, Kenya. That was exactly yeah. the first impression, Kenya. 
and and I if I didn't do it consciously it, it was a subconscious thing it wasn't like I go I wanted to look like Africa never I just wanted a very rural untouched landscape where there's no street pole there's no cell phone tower in the background there's no path I don't want to see like a walk path because then you know that we're in a in a public space mm -hmm. so it was very clever framing because actually the scene at the end where he's swimming and at the beginning like literally 100 meters further up there were people like having a barbecue and swimming and oh, really? <laughs> yeah and sometimes they would swim, like we would be doing a take as he's walking towards the water and i'd be like sorry there's someone in the background swimming <laughs> and then we would have to wait for them to stop swimming <laughs> so yeah. yeah but i think at the end of the day location is so important right it's it, it's kind of finding finding a space that that works for many reasons like production need needs to work because you know you have to carry all this heavy equipment into a nature is into a sort of nature reserve so it can't be a half an hour walk it needs to be a five minute walk from the parking lot but you also don't want it to look like it's where people come on the weekend to have a barbecue and then you still want it to be like you've got to have the sun and if we had found we found other forest bits but then the sun is always in the wrong place and then that didn't work so funny enough we were supposed to shoot this on a saturday and bob messaged me on Thursday evening. He said, Barker, I'm just looking at the weather forecast. Saturday looks like it's raining the whole day. Hmm. And I said, Bob, well, I don't mind. Like, it would look amazing if it was all in the rain. Like, he's like, ah, I'm not sure, Bark. I think we need to, we need some sun. We we need, we need to backlight it. Like, we, otherwise it all looks flat. And then I said, you know what, Bob, you're right. Let me see if everyone's available on Sunday. Because this is another thing, right? You've booked this, booked everyone for Saturday. Um, focus puller that will needed to be available. Um, I needed to be available. Bob needed to be available. The camera equipment needed to be available. So now you suddenly last minute throw everything around because of the weather forecast. And it, and it worked out beautifully. It was a beautiful day. It was like 20, 22, 24 degrees. The sun was going down at half past nine in the evening. It, it was yeah it, it it was an amazing amazing location and then i think trying to find that variety so you have that scene with the tree in the savannah but then you have the, he runs into the forest for for safety he thinks that under the trees he's safe but then he's still being attacked and then he runs away from that and then he eventually finds the water and he's like let me if i make it to the water it's going to be okay and then he makes it into he makes it to the water so you still want that that location story to tell you something. And I think that was also important. For Will, it was like a stage, wasn't it? Where he could explore and... Uh, yeah, in the, and in the big, I mean, he'd never been in front of camera before. He did like a little bit of like commercial work where he just has to be like walking in the background kind of thing, but he'd never danced in front of camera. So for me, it was really important that he felt comfortable with Bob and camera and dancer almost have to be more in sync than dancer and director. Like I can give him my input and I can tell Bob what I want, but in the two minute take, like Bob needs to almost feel that Will's moving this way. So almost preempt that he's going to move. Like these two need to be so in sync the whole time. And, and Will really had to learn quickly how to play it towards camera because a lot of time he would, turn away and then he would dance this way like and I'm like well I, I can't see your face I don't have a dance no matter how beautiful your dance is I need to see your face your face tells me so much more than what your body does your eyes are like the window like it's super cliche but the, the, the eyes are the window to the soul so if I don't see your eyes I can't connect with you so he had to learn really quickly to always dance towards camera. And he, he, it took a while, but he quickly got that idea. And then, and then he just like, it was like a light bulb moment. He, he just suddenly went into this other zone where he's in the moment. And then I would say, okay, cut. How are you doing? He's like, oh, can I have my shoes back? <laughs> he was literally, I made him dance barefoot on the thorny on the sort of rough soil where there were a couple of thorns and it, 
it wasn't very nice, but I said, you can't wear shoes. It, it, it I, I'll, I can see it in your face if you're wearing shoes, even though I don't see your shoes. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of made him uncomfortable, but it shows in his, in his performance. And I think working with, with Will was just really amazing because I just basically gave him a really short script and I said, dance it. Do, do a thing. And he kind of just really explored his own dance. And I also found that a little bit challenging because like what what qualifies me to start giving him dance moves? I'm not a choreographer. I don't understand. Not that I don't understand dance. I mean, you, you either connect with it or you don't. But I, I don't know how he must express what's going on inside. That's what he he does. I can capture it in a way that that makes him feel more like the hero of the moment by, mm -hmm. by by framing it square, always having him in the middle, giving him a bit of negative space sometimes. Sometimes that moment where he's standing and he and he's breathing in, it's negative space, all the negative space above him. But that's where the outside force comes from. That's that's the control I have as a director and a DOP to say, hey, Bob, give me negative, give me. Show me the forest at the top. Like make Will really small. But actually what he does with his body, that was, that was Will. You know, like that's how he expressed himself. And 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 he just worked really hard. I mean, he danced for like five, six hours. And he was giving everything, every take. And at the end of the day, I drove him home back to Amsterdam. And he was finished. He was exhausted. <laughs> I mean, I was finished by carrying camera bags and carrying this and carrying that and running here. I mean, physically, I'd never worked so hard on a, on a film <laughs> set in a while. Yeah. But, as yet, I, but as I was driving Will back, I'm like, dude, that was that was amazing. Let's do it again tomorrow. Like, let's let's shoot another thing because it gives you so much energy, you know, so much more. You're just happy. You just got that performance of you walking in the water and when you drop your hands and that's, that smile, Will, that, that's what it was about. Like, that's why you do what you do. Be that little moment, you know, and then everything else, well, it's just, it goes with it. But it, it makes it worthwhile. And I think he really enjoyed the experience. And and um, I'm sure he'll uh, be in a lot more dance films. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you plan to, 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 to work with him more on dance or oh, um, maybe on a feature film even? Or it's like one, maybe for now, it's one time collaboration, one time a creative friendship or no i mean it's long lasting creative friendship for sure it's long lasting because everything yeah. what you have experienced together will will be remembered and if you created memory i think we did, we did. it was his first dance film as opposed to first time i did something like this <laughs> but i think i think for for me i think you always have to go okay this was the challenge we we achieved it What's the next challenge? I think now, if it, if you work with Will again, it won't be a challenge because I know now how he wants to work. Like, I know what he needs from me and I know mm -hmm. what he doesn't need from me. So then that sort of feeling uncomfortable aspect then is gone. Yeah. And I think that's why in the commercial world, where if you find an actor you really like working with and you're doing a bank job and you say hey this guy would be great for that role and then next time you're doing a i don't know an insurance job you go you know the guy we use for the bank job he'd be great because you know what you're gonna get and you yeah. don't you don't want a challenge you just want someone who will do it in three four takes and that i can convince a client this guy is great for this role because he'll give you the look you want and just to prove him you know, so I think that's the that's the difference between doing a, a paid work and a personal project. It's the the uncertainty, like, is this going to work? And, uh, yeah, you, I, I think it's great to challenge with that. No, yeah. okay. I was thinking like this. So, uh, but do you remember the very first uh, project you made? So was it the, the first project, video project? Was it commercial or was it still personal project? How did you, I know you're also a photographer and I, I watched, I saw some of your, uh, some of the photographs on the website and they're beautiful. And I guess I wanted to ask you a little bit about your ability to connect to strangers and your photo projects, Strangers We Meet. Strangers and, We Meet, yes. So yes, basically and, I, I started my career like, 
I, I finished film school and I was like, I want to become a director. Well, I think everyone wants to be a director, right? No one wants to be like the editor or the... the, the an actor. I'm well, an actor. I don't want to be an actor, no. But I, but I think, so I, I kind of finished film school and I was like, I want to be a director. And for an internship, there was no really an internship for a director. So they they they, they arranged for me to do my internship at a post-production company in Cape Town. And I arrived and they said, hi, Barker, nice that you're here for six months. Um, listen, not sure what you're going to do here because we can't give you paying work. So there's an edit suite. If you want to go and shoot something yourself and then come and edit here, we can help you with that. And you can sit with the editors. I was like, okay. So I went to go and shoot a little PSA about sun how important sun cream was. It was terrible. I don't think I... Even I don't think there's even a copy of it. So it, I don't even know where it is. But it was terrible. But it did teach me about editing. And it got me into editing. And for the first big part of my career, I just I was I was an editor. I I worked at a TV station, I've done TV programs, and then you end up starting to cut commercials. And then slowly but surely, I was like, I want, want to be a director. So I, I wrote a little short film about uh, a man that walks into a lift and uh, the lift goes up to the top floor and he's standing in front of the door and he's waiting for the door to open and the door doesn't open and he completely loses it because he's there for a job interview and he's now going to be late. And he completely has a meltdown in the lift and at one point in his absolute desperation he's like why why me and suddenly he hears a voice from behind him and he turns around to realize that it was actually a lift that has a, a door on one side and on behind him so that was my first like personal project that i did for fun that's very and philosophical i guess it, was nice, <laughs> like, it, it, it looks like a parable you know like, nah, like a it was, parable it, it, you know, about the flow of time <laughs> There was nothing filmic about it. There was, uh, it was basically, yeah, it, it felt a little bit like a student project, which it was because it was me learning and, and I, you know, you're very young and I was like 24, 25 and you're trying to, you're trying to make something because you want to make it. Um, and then the, the first time I ever did a thing, a short film that I was really, really proud of was a one minute short called The Fallen. I don't know if you've maybe seen it. I, I haven't. I haven't uh -huh. seen yet. Um, I mean, who doesn't? What boy doesn't want to make a sort of period film that's World War II? And then uh, my wife's grandfather fought uh, for South Africa during World War II. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought it was it was kind of a part of South African history that people don't talk about because it is the wrong side of history, kind of. It's the sort of colonial powers at war, not Africa at war, even though a lot of Africans did actually fight in the war as uh, ambulance drivers, stretcher bearers, cooks. You know, they weren't ever given a rifle, but they were there. So I kind of wanted to tell that big story, but this was just something to do in the meantime. Um, yeah, and, and, and this was... Um, it was a film festival called Film Minute and where you have to make a 60 second film. And I think that's maybe where my thing of like, if you can't tell it in one minute, then you don't can't tell it in five minutes. Like you can tell this massive story about, a, about two best friends. They have a promise. One of them dies. One has to go back to the back home and tell the wife. And this happened 13,256 times. Um, so I think, you know, then then you you do a project like that. And then obviously at the same time, you start doing more commercials and, and, and content pieces and a lot of corporate films. And then every now, you feel like you have to make your own project at some point because, you know, the other the other work pays, but it doesn't feed, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so, it doesn't give you this emotion. It's not so emotionally rewarding anyway. No, no. The fact that you wake... I always say that you could wake me up at three o'clock in the morning and say, hey, we're shooting tomorrow. Can you quickly present it to the client? I'd be like, okay, give me five minutes and then I'll present it. Because yeah. it's so, it's 
it's it's it's in your comfort zone right it's it's in your your you have a bag of tricks and those are the tricks you use and there's never an insecure feeling but when you do your own project the whole thing feels insecure and and you feel out of your comfort zone and and you don't have the answers to everything and yeah. you don't know what you really want to say you know you want to say something but what you don't know so, and the most and even more difficult is how and By how that, that, <laughs> yeah and then and then it's about having the the people around you like like a bob who shoots beautifully and and he always the thing with bob he always challenges you he kind of like okay cool we can do that but what about if we do this and this and you're like yeah that's even better and you know that's bob and then you have will who you say hey well i wrote a little script i want you to dance that and will does his thing then you you go to someone like nick and you say hey we've got an edit can you sound design it and he sound designs it um and I think that's the nice thing about these projects is that it it's not one person. Like you're mm -hmm. as good as the people around you and you can't do it on your own. And when you have all these opinions and perspectives on some, it, it does then take on a life of its own. It becomes something that you are only merely the custodian of, you're not the creator of. Yeah. I, I, I can feel that it becomes not about you, it becomes beyond you, but it so yeah. suddenly becomes about all those people who are yeah. working with you. So it starts like something within you, but then the others evolve it. And I think the most beautiful moment is that when you get the idea, when you think that you could never ever bestow a thought on that, but here it is, here it works. And I think it becomes about other people. And I think what's the most yeah. beautiful about it. but memories they something which give you so much emotional food and uh and so that's why when uh, in memory when i was watching i was thinking wow that's so beautiful because you can feel this animalistic instincts in a way just to save yourself even without having anything in your head but uh, yeah. maybe your, your your brain cannot give you the answer but the water and the land i mean to feel the touch of the feet to the earth to feel hands in the water so when you something not human but out of nature that yeah. can be that can be helpful because the brain was no longer functioning and memories are there but they suddenly become tactile i don't know it mm. makes sense so so uh, i'm busy writing that as a as a, a screenplay at the moment and at the moment i have i'll show you uh, oh, i can't share my screen with you but yeah um so that that's kind of uh, inspired uh, the story of a little boy called um, what's his name again? Ashwin, Ashwin Daniels, and he's thirteen years old, and he runs away from home. And most movies, there's always something big that happens, right? Like I don't know, um, in La Haine, you know, there's a gun that that is uh, that is lost, and then these kids find it, and they get in trouble, and it's always mm -hmm. very plot driven, but I think with the street surfer, I kind of want to show the pointlessness of it. That there is yeah. no, there is no big moment that that then changes. You know, like there's no big plot. Sometimes it's just living on the street is tough. You know, especially if you if you're 13 years old and and that's where you become a man. Like you're forced to become a man on the street, um, and it's that sort of coming of age story of of a young boy who's already lost his dad, uh, decides to run away to live on the street because that's where he can just be who he wants to be. And he, he, he's on the street. He gets in, gets in with the wrong crowd. He goes to jail, like sort of juvenile. He runs away from juvenile and keeps running and running and running and running because that's a theme in the film. And mm -hmm. eventually he gets to the beach and he can't run any further. He's at the coastline. The water is ahead of him and left or right. And he decides to turn right. And as he's walking along the beach, he finds an old sort of like three, like half a surfboard, like something that's been washed up on the shore. And he thinks, oh, well, no one else around. Let me see if I can play around a little bit in the water. And then he plays around in the water. And suddenly there's a big wave that crushes him 
sinks him, hits him into the bottom. And in that sort of tumbling of being in the wave, his sort of life flashes. All the people that had disappointed him in his life flash past. And he's looking for the light. And suddenly he's coming towards the surface. And as he breaks up, he's now 26 years old in a proper wetsuit with a proper surfboard. And his friends that are surfing ask him if he's okay. He's like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Let's go surfing. And it's that moment. And that's kind of the, the idea of the film. You know, it's, it's the 13-year-old the versus the 30-year-old. And then actually the real street kid, um, Alfonso, he's now married. He has three children. He has his own surf school. So it's also a little bit of the inspiration to kind of show him as a family man. To So he he's allowed to become the father that his father was never to him, you know. His, mm -hmm. his father, father committed suicide in real life when he was three years old. And he always had this thing of he hated his dad because he said, Dad, don't you didn't you want to see who 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 I was going to become, you know? And I think that's so powerful that 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 you have that sort of experience as a youngster, you know, that those are the kinds of questions you're asking yourself, you know. Didn't you want to see me grow up? Um, and in the film, he does get to see his children grow up and be the dad. So that's my sort of big, big project. <laughs> um that that is obviously a lot bigger than me and, and i'm just kind of currently writing it i'm looking for a for a producer to to sort of like team up with me and start like applying for funding and, and, and building a team around it because you can't really do something like that on it on your own you know so at least with memory you can keep a small like the crew really small and you can make something now and and then two months time three months time you have something to show for it where something like this is a sort of a long-term project yeah yeah no I, I mean i i only could wish you the best of luck and if and it would be a pleasure to know how the project evolves and if you will yeah. write down on your website we will follow on i will follow on your website what are the the next steps and uh yeah. i would be I, I i will be the first in the audience <laughs> i would <laughs> really i would really yeah. love to love to to see it and uh, i think it's a brilliant idea and actually it, it, uh, you have two protagonists two main characters the water and the boy so yes, and i think yes. and and, and I, the, the way i've written it is that he has his recurring nightmare of yeah ground and being underwater and then he wakes up and you know in his bed and or on the street or there's moments where it's raining at night and he finds refuge in it's like a little drain pipe. And you see that round circle of the drain pipe, you see a little boy, and the outside is just water. So there is that that sense, the protagonist is the water, you know. Um or it's like a canvas, like a like a uh, what what in, brings flashbacks and flash forwards, right? You're gonna have flashback scenes as well. Flashbacks, yeah. In there. So and and when, you have an amazing ability, Bauke, to speak so visually. The way you 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 say you say the scene, and I have it in my mind. You know, oh. you have an amazing ability. You're a wonderful narrator, uh, you, as well yeah. as well uh, among the other merits. I, I mean, and uh, and so yeah, and the water becomes uh, even a narrative canvas. So bringing so in it, so in different time uh, layers mm. together. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, it's a, it's exciting. I think uh, you're only as they say you're as good as your last project. Well, at the moment, memory is my last project, <laughs> um, <laughs> and then you hope that the next one can be better than memory. You know, like at least keep advancing what you do and, and keep pushing how you do things. You know, if if, if it doesn't scare you, then you shouldn't do it. I think, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, I think that's kind of my story. It's a it's a beautiful story, and I could only be grateful because uh, I think I, I, okay, I forgot to say at the very beginning that I was recording. Is is okay? Yeah, it's okay. I, 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 I saw it recording. Yeah, because yeah, I, yeah, because emails, I think so the. Right. Yeah, yeah, like no, but it, because it's just I, again coming back to the topic of memories, and to me personally, the topic of memories, I treasure them so dearly. Like I said before, I was shocked when I was deprived of memories. So I think one of the greatest things 
of this sharing. I can't call it an interview. It's rather a conversation or okay. a conversation, an art talk. I can't call it. But I think the greatest thing is that it stays. And I think wh why I feel this strong need to shift, I guess, from theater to 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 stories on screen because this factor, this moment of that films to filmed stories are stories that stay and i guess i have this need right now because before i didn't feel this need i was enjoying the moment because yeah. theater is quite a momentous thing and uh, but having story that stays and like you recording the today's conversation it will become a story that will stay and i and people may, may listen and find inspirations and find words that are that will be healing to them in that particular moment of life maybe I, I, I was a little bit nervous because in the in, in the beginning you were like yeah let's let's talk about poetry let's talk about i was like i'm not sure if i have much to say about poetry i'm just a filmmaker who thinks more visual you know i don't if you mention the top if you say to me what are the top five poets in the world at the moment i'd be like i don't know you know <laughs> <laughs> I or wasn't thinking. I was honestly, Valky. I wasn't thinking of asking that, but I guess I I was thinking about asking what's your what what book? What's your favorite book and what's your favorite movie? Because I always love to hear these stories. Uh, my, my I mean, favorite, if there favorite, is a film that you can watch like forever, if there yeah, is a it, book that you can read like forever, uh, the, the, it's probably a, a film. Uh, there's a, a French director, Francois Truffaut. Oh, I'm thinking talking about 500 blows. 400 blows. 400 blows, 500. Yes. 500. Yes. Because, actually, when you were talking about the uh, your film and the boy reaching the sea, yes. you would not imagine, I'm not lying this to you, I wanted no, no, no. to ask you, did you have an inspiration yes. from Truffaut's final scene when he finally reached yes. the sea? Yes. I, 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 wow. it's, you know what? It's such a powerful, it's such a powerful moment in cinema and it's a is it a copy no is it inspiration yes because my boy he actually goes into the sea where where in uh, 400 blows he just stops and he looks into camera but it's it's i love the fact that it wasn't a big it wasn't a big movie it was just so personal and and you were just you were there with the two boys every step of the way and it was just a slice of life. There was no big turning point. There was no massive action sequence. Yes, they stole a typewriter. And the, the fact that he, in such a sad way, he goes and returns the typewriter and then gets arrested. And that's what lands up in putting him in juvenile and his parents kind of saying, listen, deal with him because we can't deal with him. It's so sad. But it's just real life. Just we the way he weaved real life into some sort of narrative was beautiful. And I think with the street surfer, I'm trying to do the same thing. It's a troubled boy who thinks he can run away from everything, but at the end of the day, he has to face it. And there's no big story plot. There's no, it's just moments that you weave together. And I think then, yes, 400 blows is kind of my inspiration for with a street surfer. Uh, the other movie I really, really love is Jean-Pierre Melville, uh, Les Samurai. It's in 1967. It's about a, a hit man. And he uh, he has to go and do a hit. and But he wears sort of that beautiful sort of full hat with a trench coat always up. And Melville does this amazing thing where... From the moment he's in his apartment to the moment he walks into the car and the moment he drives down the road, every second is accounted for. There's no mm -hmm. like, op open the front door and now I'm in the car. There's no cutting out of time. He lets you watch that character do his whole action of walking down the staircase, yeah. into the hallway, out the front door, onto the street, around the corner, around the other corner, through an alley, and then he gets in the car. And you just go, why was that so tense? Why? It, it's showing everything. And in that moment, in that very long moment, you know the character that he has things to hide. 
he he acts in a certain way but it's just it's brave filmmaking to show everything for what it is that's why i like that movie yeah. and, and 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 to be honest the raincoat the hat it's just super stylish <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, that's, that's beautiful I, I guess my my favorites are um I, I'm a big fan of Antonioni, so I would probably say Leclis with Monica Vitti and Alain Delon. Leclis uh, and the Red Desert, El Deserto that's, Rosso. That's, that's the link. I, I've never Antonio. watched it. And I, the, you sent me a link to a Ukrainian movie the other day? Yes, the, the, the Shadows of Forgotten Ancestors by yeah. Sergei Parajanov. He was of, uh, yeah, uh, so one of the first uh, who used the red uh, color as a dramatic element so that's why i immediately thought about your inspiration yeah, yeah. you had scenes where the, there is a splashes of red sergey parajano yeah and then i said about red desert and i don't know why i thought about it why i saw uh why i saw red desert in memory i don't know why but i, I think, think what's I, the great i think the the red I just I, I, it's just very universal and i think you know, my movie started like watching Spielberg and like watching Jaws and Saving Pride Ryan, and then eventually you get onto Schindler's List, which yeah. is all black and white except for the girl in the red. So I think that red, oh, the was quote, then, yeah. yeah, was more a Steven Spielberg Schindler's List kind of tribute than mm -hmm. a, even longer ago. <laughs> Yeah, but the square framing you mentioned it was Pavlikovsky's Ida inspiration, in a way. I, I the the way no. Ida is is all square, right? Well, it's it's four by three. It's not square. The, yeah. my film is perfectly square, but that's four by three. But yeah. yeah. And and the character is always in the middle and in the world, in the middle and in the world, which I thought was beautiful. Um, so it's something I wanted to do with him as well, because to be honest. I don't need to see more landscape and more landscape. You just want to see him. And if you just squeeze his world and you go, that's that's him. The fact that the background is nice and pretty doesn't add, add anything to the story. So why why confuse the audience with even more landscape to look at? It's felt that Will is always present. It's, oh, he is always present. He's always the beating heart of the frame. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I, I wrote it to you in one of my emails or somewhere that I have this feeling that f the film has a duration, almost life duration. It's from dawn till dusk and it gives a strong continuity. But I realized that I, my brain was somehow, was not paying attention to, to the countdown sounds. Uh, it, to be honest, the countdown sound was in a piece of music that 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 a composer in Cape Town had made, not for this film, but for something else completely. And I kept it because I kind of really liked the fact that it, it kind of did. I like the fact that last kind of it makes you feel slightly like uneasy like what what's going to happen like and also the 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 breath sounds that we had added in there that it's like <sighs> yes yes that's uh, that I did feel Paul I the, did feel kind of it's a story that carry it's carrying on it's it's and we've cut it on the beat we didn't fade the music out I wanted a like a hard cut because it would be really easy just to let it fade off into something else you know but just be deliberate about that, and chuk, that's the end. It's almost like a, a shutter of a, of a camera. Chuk, close. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But but it, the, the ending does have this feeling of, con of continuity. You so strongly feel that it's not the end. You know, like I said at the beginning, you know that he will reemerge. You don't know how, when, if he feels to do so. But it's not that he's submerging without without re-emerging again he's not going for a swim <laughs> yeah yeah i would rather say he's going on a new life journey yes. To me, yes yes we don't know what that is and we don't need to know but it's a continuation yes and it's a beautiful transition from just from close up on his footsteps in the opening shot and the whole body in the water.
at the very end. So it's quite a journey from which, which I which looks from dawn to dusk. It's almost yeah. like like life. So the sun um, the sun rises and then the, the sun sets, and the person has made maybe a life changing decision within one day before the sunset. Yeah. So, we waited a really long time for that sun to set. And then the question was, do we get him to walk in the water with the sun just on the horizon? Or do we get him walking into the water when the sun's down? And I thought, if the sun is down or completely, it has a different feeling. It, it, the life is gone. The sun being there still gives life to the moment. Where if the sun is down, it almost feels like a, a really ending thing that He's almost walking to his grave. That there's no, there's no life anymore. So because we only had one take. Because if you, if his hair was wet, then it would be, yeah. So and seven was, seconds underwater. Seven seconds and, underwater. And seven seconds underwater, and then move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm really glad that you uh, enjoyed the film so much, and that 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 you guys gave us a a, a spot to be screened. It was really nice and really. Uh, it's great to get that sort of feedback and and and, and acknowledgement that, that people love your film as they maybe people love your film even more than you love it because you always see faults in your own work right like you always see something and go oh we could have done this we could should have done that that didn't work out well this work you know but other people see it as a as a whole you know yeah um, yeah and, and I think yeah I I, I, I th th there is this phrase which I I don't know, I once invented, I know the best thing what I love about movies is, you know, of course, it's the movie on screen, but the best thing of it, it's your internal movie unfolding within you together with the screen story. And then it becomes like uh, an avalanche, memories, yes. flashback, flash forwards. You start to, to, to go down your memory lanes. You start to, you're yes. back to childhood and you to adolescence. And I think that, what what is so powerful is that it the film memory evokes internal movie within 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 the audience and yeah. so different but and i'm very glad for this this sharing i don't know it's not even a conversation or a sharing and to be able to unveil and bosom the soul in a way it's like yeah, yeah. It has, it's 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 food for it can it gives you renewed energy to, tackle something else you know these sorts of conversations so thank you yeah but, uh, i am so, so grateful that you noticed separation and belonging theme and it it just everything matched and i think even the fact that it was screened in lisbon i think even the film suits the city and the city suits the film because lisbon used to live uh with the rhythm of the waves and i think the whole lifestyle is attuned to waves so I think it was. It was also maybe it was just one of the, one of one of more aspects that make it more special. And maybe some people I don't know, but maybe some people come to the screening right from the beach and still having still having sand, you know, I in know their shoes. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think, yeah, but yeah, but and it's so international city. And yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful city. We were there last year, and uh, we still have to come back sometime. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I, so I, I'm I'm really really grateful. I think beyond gratitude, <laughs> really for for having. Have, for you, have, started, having have you started working then on the next next year, or is that going to be a different themes, different? Uh... Yeah, actually, yes, we do. We do plan to have the second edition and to go with this theme. I still don't know what theme it will be, but actually, when we were uh, initially at a theater company, we wanted to do a festival, and of course, we wanted to go beyond theater, and a, a part of it was the desire to give. A voice to the memories that stay they stay on screen and uh, yeah. and uh, and actually I, I initially i i didn't imagine the festival without a theme so my colleagues uh, at some point were saying to me that maybe the theme will impose some restrictions but actually to me it felt so liberating i think mm -hmm. that when you have a theme you can act there are so many ways you can respond and uh, it's actually liberating so it's no long it's no way restricting you it's giving yeah. you much greater freedom so and and the the the, the, the theme of separation has uh, I knew at once it will be the theme of separation. And later, my coll colleague Daniel said that, but I thought separation is not enough because but what brings you back to? And he said, oh, that's belonging. 
that's yeah. belonging. So, yeah. And yeah. so it's not what takes you away, but what brings you back to it. And I, I think that separation was initially my idea because, yeah, because, and, and I think the, it was partially born from the fact that I felt separated from memories. And I also realized that when you are separate, when you're separated from something, that actually makes you feel everything so stronger. Until the moment you separate, you never know that you can actually have these feelings within yes. you, so yes. so subtle and so powerful. So I think you have to lose to gain, if it makes sense. Always, you, always. You know, uh, so then next year, I still, I don't know what's going to be the theme, but we definitely plan to keep going and have the second uh, edition. And I, I would love the theme to be a signature thing for Ja, yeah. because Ja is actually a Portuguese word, which means here and now. It's like Ja in German and Ja, uh, ja God, yeah. like now, here and now. And, and it relates to theater, but also it relates to film because the feelings are here and now. Your your experience the story here and, and, and now so yeah I, I I think that I think the theme is I think it's a good idea and I think that's what separates <laughs> excuse the pun but I think it <laughs> separates this film festival to other film festivals because most fest festivals it's just submit your film and then you feel a bit like well I'm just submitting something that's very personal into a big machine and then it spits out where where if it's if it's a theme based, it feels a bit more. It's a bit more niche, actually, and and a bit more personal. I think. I think so too. I think it's uh, yeah. I think it's intimate, but it it truly gives you so many ways to respond. And uh, and for example, in separation and belonging selection, I don't know whether you had a chance to watch it it's on the website and uh, the gallery. Uh, yeah, but there were uh there were were dance film. Yeah, a love letters to your homeland. Uh, then there were um, an, a, a manifestation of sorrows and grief, and 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 there were romances. There were uh, love stories and love letters to homeland yes. and dance films, and and there were so there were many many manifestations, uh, truly many, an abstract animation and uh, and dance. But they but the theme was bringing them all together, and I think. It's nice that these films were, were were sharing the screen together because it was actually it was one of the challenging things to make a sequence because yeah. I didn't want to influence the viewers by a certain editing mode like you know to group yeah. films and to to influence like to have the perception of one movie because it's yeah. not it's every movie is an individual voice so the only yeah so that's why it was a bit challenging in terms of rhythm and in terms of like i mean i guess the main thing for in the in the making the sequence was to make every film be individual and i think that worked i think that yeah. actually worked and every film was perceived as an individual strong uh story and yeah, amazing yeah yeah so i hope i hope so but i hope we we go on and i yeah. even know that we will go on with the with it I, i'm sure that it will just grow and grow and grow and before yeah. before you know it you'll be on year five and then uh you'll look back on year one and go wow that yeah. seems like a long time ago but not so long ago yeah and actually actually this year this year jail theater celebrates five years it's five year anniversary so doing a festival it was also one of the ways to 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 celebrate the five years of international not about job ja, but of international yeah. storytelling yes. and of telling uh, stories that move which initially was like our slogan or motto yeah. telling yeah. stories that move yeah. and so and i'm very happy that on the fifth year uh we made it we staged our first ever job poetry film competition yeah. and like you say maybe then it will be 10 years of the company but the fifth anniversary of yeah. poetry film competition so and we're so, and that was yeah that was beautiful and we're all in different countries but we have a crew in a wonderful crew and suresh is one yeah. of the co-founders he is like the the pillar the the, the pillar the, the our anchor in lisbon yeah. so to yeah. say it's great, yeah, and um, and I'm here managing from from Kia, but yeah. uh, but I think it's being here made me even more connected to Lisbon than ever because I, I don't manage. need to worry about anyone. So. 
I'm just very grateful to have known you uh, on our first inaugural competition. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, and I really, uh, it, it was nice that it, it was good to know that it was uh, being being shown in, in, in such a sort of intimate place with, with like-minded people and that appreciate the arts and, and, and trying to say something with a film, not just make a film for being cool, it's but just true. make it say something. It was it was shown actually in Kusul. It's an art association, a very chamber one, and it yeah. has a story because initially it was it it celebrated, I guess, one hundred and one uh, one hundred and fiftieth anniversary oh, because wow. it, the story the story of the building and the story of the association dates back to eighteen fifties, if I'm not mistaken, oh, wow. because okay. Guillermo Guillermo Kusul was a Portuguese musician and so this association was is named Kusu in his honor and for already over a century over, over a, a century it celebrates yeah. different arts and it was set up uh, by volunteers who wanted to honor the musician who wanted to, and then it evolved into an yeah. art space where uh, it's like a very intimate space and I, and I love yeah. the fact that it's intimate it's very old school and you have the screen and you have the curtains and yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was very grateful that they were so uh, cooperative with us yeah. and they offered us their platform and the other venue was Casa Fernando Pessoa the the house uh, of the Portuguese most famous poet so okay yeah, well, that's next, next time I go to Lisbon, I have to visit these places just to see. Yes, you. and and we hope to see your next films in the next editions, and we will I, follow. I'm not, the I'm, I'm, I'm not promising anything, but yes. who knows? Who knows? But, but I can assure you, I will follow, and we will follow the destiny of the street surfer. Thank you so much. And the dance project, project, and the dance project, of course. Well, the dance project, the dance project will happen before the street surfer, but that's yeah. that's also fine. I think project even doesn't do justice to the whole beautiful, uh, beautiful story behind it. I don't know how to call it dance, dance expression, dance I, I, uh, I, manifestation. I, I, I don't, I don't know. know. I just know that it's like a, a a mix between a documentary film but a dance film. Yeah. It's a docky dance thing. So, Ducky dance. That's, Ducky that's, dance. That's, sounds yeah. cool. But yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate. I really enjoyed chatting to you. Um, it's amazing when you chat creative. You always have so many things that you that you can link on and that you have in common, and it, it, it makes you feel like that you're not actually creating in, on your own little island. You, you you might be on your own island, but all those islands make up one big country or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful likewise and it's good that the island is washed by the sea we need the sea, True. We, we, need the sea. Was, we, we went to the beach yesterday for the first time in a while and it was so nice because the weather was good uh, and i was, have a small lake i live by the lake a very small local lake but still okay. it's waters and it's nice to, oh, to have. it's important it's an important element thank you Bauke. Uh, thank you so much bye really enjoyed chatting and i really hope that you have a good time and we'll definitely be in touch okay we definitely didn't. I thank you. Have a great day and great day. Thanks, and, hey. and lots of inspiration to you this spring, this very special spring. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. I'll send you the link later. Bye bye. Take care. Okay, thanks. Take care.